What if I told you that the law of conservation of energy does not hold in our universe? Yes, this basic and fundamental law, one of the very first we are told about in school, actually does not work, and in more than one way. And this is, of course, quite unfortunate, because the law of conservation of energy is not only familiar and intuitive, but also deeply logical and natural. After all, what could be more natural than the assumption that energy cannot come from nowhere or vanish into nothing, but only be transformed from one form into another? Alas, the universe is not required to be the way we like, and its laws operate, or in this case, do not operate, regardless of how logical they may seem to us. And before we begin, I wanna take this opportunity to thank the sponsors of the channel here on YouTube and also on the pages on Patreon and Boosty. Friends, I am truly grateful to you for your support, thanks to which the channel can continue to exist and grow. I hope I will keep making interesting and educational videos for you about how the world around us works. You can join the sponsors by clicking the link that should now appear in the corner of your screen or by scanning the QR code. All necessary links will also be in the video description. Once again, Thank you very much to all who already support the channel and to those who choose to become sponsors today. Now let's try to understand why it turns out that energy is not conserved. At school, conservation laws such as the law of conservation of energy, momentum, and angular momentum are derived from Newton's second law. It is fairly easy to derive that the change in kinetic energy of a body equals the work done by external forces. However, in reality, conservation laws do not follow from Newton's laws. It is the other way around. Newton's laws are a consequence of more global conservation laws. But even those laws are not fundamental or lying at the very foundation of our universe. They also, in turn, follow from certain properties of our world. Specifically certain symmetries possessed by our space-time, this link was mathematically proven by the German mathematician Emmy Noether in the early 20th century. For example, the law of conservation of momentum follows from the fact that the space of our universe is homogeneous. In simple terms, this means that the laws of physics are the same in all parts of the universe. If we simply move some physical system through space while keeping the external conditions the same, it should continue to behave the same way as it did before being moved. You can relocate a mechanical system, for example, a spring pendulum, to another point in space and the pendulum will oscillate there with the same frequency as it did in the original point. In the language of mathematics, this means that when a system is shifted by a certain distance in space, the Lagrangian function of the system must remain unchanged. In addition, quantity derived from the Lagrangian function, known as the action, must also remain stationary. We talk more in detail about the Lagrangian, the action, and why this should be so in one of our previous videos, so I will not repeat it here. I will just say that from these two conditions alone, one can mathematically derive the law of conservation of momentum. I will simply leave the derivation here for those of my viewers who enjoy formulas. Another conservation law, the law of conservation of angular momentum, that is, the quantity of rotation, also follows from a fundamental spatial symmetry, namely its isotropy, meaning that our space has no preferred directions. Simply put, Whichever way we look in our universe, we see the same universe governed by the same physical laws. And likewise, the behavior of our mechanical system must not depend on its rotation by any angle in isotropic space. And finally, the law of conservation of energy, which is today's topic, follows from a third symmetry, the homogeneity of time, that is, the fact that the course of a physical process does not depend on when exactly it begins. We can choose any moment as our starting point, and what we observe in an experiment will depend only on how long we observe. The experiment will give the same result now, in one year, or in 100 years. By the way, in addition to the three school book conservation laws, there is one more, the law of conservation of electric charge, and it also relies on a certain symmetry of our universe, the so-called gauge invariance. This one is a bit less obvious, the idea is that the behavior of a quantum mechanical system must not change if we multiply its wave function by a phase factor of a certain type. Let me stress once again 
Conservation laws do not exist independently. They follow from certain symmetries of space and time, and they hold only as long as these symmetries are present. And here lies the problem. In the case of the law of conservation of energy, its corresponding symmetry does not always hold. As we said above, to preserve energy, we need time to be homogeneous. In other words, we need the conditions in our universe to remain unchanged over time. But we know with certainty that these conditions do change, and sometimes quite significantly, because the universe is expanding and the conditions within it gradually shift. In the very distant past of our universe, there was a time when the four familiar fundamental interactions, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces did not yet exist. Instead, there was some unified interaction about which we currently know almost nothing, but we are trying to understand how it might have worked. Later on, there was a time when our universe was so dense and hot that light could not propagate through it. Its photons were absorbed almost instantly after emission and re-emitted only to be absorbed again right away. Changes, though not so dramatic, are still happening today. Distances between stars and galaxies continue to increase, the average density of matter drops, and so on. A classic example of the violation of the law of conservation of energy in an expanding universe is the cosmological redshift, a phenomenon in which light emitted millions or even billions of years ago reaches us with a longer wavelength than it had when it was emitted. This is directly explained by the expansion of the universe, the fact that billions of years ago, the stretch of space occupied by the photon was smaller than the one it occupies today. But at the same time, we know that the energy of a photon is directly proportional to the frequency of its associated electromagnetic radiation and inversely proportional to its wavelength. This means that a reddened photon reaching us from the depths of the universe has less energy than it did at the moment of its emission. On its way to us, the photon lost part of its energy and not because of interacting with something, but simply into nowhere. The energy did not transform into another form. It simply disappeared because the law of conservation of energy, in fact, is not upheld. And if our ideas are correct, that even the emptiest space possesses energy simply due to the fact of its existence. Then, during the expansion of the universe, energy not only disappears into nowhere, like in the case of photons, but also appears from nowhere. Does this mean we should throw away all physics textbooks based on the law of conservation of energy? Of course not. Knowing the conditions under which the law works and under which it does not, we can still use it to solve physical problems and get correct results. And that is exactly what we need physical laws for. And as for the law of conservation of energy, it can be confidently applied over very broad ranges. Essentially in all situations we encounter in modern physics, except perhaps for certain domains like astrophysics and cosmology. In essence, on the scale of millions or even billions of years, the expansion of the universe influences conditions at any particular point so weakly that we can neglect these changes and treat time as homogeneous and energy as conserved. As an example of non-conservation of energy in the universe, we mentioned the energy loss of photons due to redshift. So consider this, a photon with an initial wavelength of 500 nanometers would, at the current rate of cosmic expansion, need 140 million years for its energy to decrease by roughly 1%. In other words, the law of conservation of energy holds with high precision on timescales far longer than the entire history of humanity. And in nearly all practical cases, it can and should be used. Though one must still keep in mind that this law, while useful, is still only an approximation, and on cosmological scales of time and distance, it does get violated. More precisely, it is not just on vast time and distance scales that the law is violated. On very small, subatomic scales, it also does not entirely work, or rather works in rather strange ways with significant caveats. The point is that in quantum mechanics, which describes such systems, there is what is called the uncertainty principle, which prevents us from simultaneously determining certain pairs of parameters precisely. The most common example is the momentum of a particle and its position, but the same applies to the energy of a quantum mechanical system and the time it remains in a state with that energy. Simply put, 
When we measure the energy of a quantum mechanical system at different moments in time, we may get slightly different energy values. And the more frequently we measure the energy, that is, the smaller the time intervals between the measurements, the more strongly the energy can vary from one measurement to the next. In fact, the shorter the interval, the greater the possible difference in values. This phenomenon is known as quantum fluctuations, and because of them, we may again encounter situations where the energy of a quantum system seems to come from nowhere or disappear. In other words, the law of conservation of energy appears to be slightly violated, and this violation becomes more noticeable the shorter the interval between measurements and the smaller the energy itself. For an electron in an atom, quantum fluctuations in its energy would become noticeable if we performed measurements at a frequency of about 10 to the 17th power times per second, which far exceeds our current capabilities. So, we have almost no chance to directly observe a violation of the law of energy conservation in the quantum world, although we do encounter, and in fact do observe, indirect manifestations of quantum fluctuations, such as the broadening of atomic emission spectral lines and similar effects. In other words, in quantum mechanics, the law of conservation of energy also holds only with significant reservations. It may not be globally violated as in cosmology, but using it requires caution and an awareness of quantum fluctuations. And we should not be too surprised that sometimes the law appears to be slightly and briefly broken. So, regrettably, the law of conservation of energy is not an absolute maxim that holds always and everywhere. And we really can encounter its violations or the consequences of its violation, both on extremely large and extremely small scales of distance and time. The good news is that these must be very large or very small scales, something that the vast majority of us will likely never encounter in our everyday or even not so everyday experiences. So in everyday life and in most of physics, the law of energy conservation holds true and we can base our reasoning about physical processes on it while keeping in mind that even this law has its limits of applicability, beyond which it stops working or begins working in ways not quite like what we are used to. At the same time, it is not uncommon for physicists to attempt to modify the law of conservation of energy. For example, in general relativity, the concept of the energy momentum tensor is introduced, and this quantity, according to the theory of relativity itself, must always be conserved, even in an expanding universe and even in a universe expanding with acceleration, as ours currently is. In fact, in any universe where relativity holds, that is, we cannot fundamentally demand conservation of energy or momentum individually, but we can demand that a certain relationship between these quantities be preserved. However, the fact that it holds in more situations does not mean that it holds fundamentally in all situations. For example, nearly all modern theories of quantum gravity predict the violation of the conservation of the energy momentum tensor at small scales. So as unfortunate as it may be to realize, there are very few things in physics that work always and everywhere, and very few laws that can be applied thoughtlessly, expecting them to hold under any circumstances. But perhaps that is for the better. After all, the more complex it is, the more fascinating it becomes. In our next videos, we will definitely continue testing the limits of applicability of the physical laws we know, and we will try to look beyond those limits and explore what might lie on the other side. But for today, that's all. All the best to you, and see you again in our upcoming videos.